Now, just a few moments ago, Donald Trump passed through here, so we had a minute to talk with him. Let's roll that tape. You can see what he had to say. Well, I've never seen anything like it. I've seen two huge 110-story buildings that are reduced to rubble, uh, thousands and thousands of lives. I just got to see something that I've never seen before. I have hundreds of men inside working right now, and we're bringing down another 125 in a little while, and they've never done work like this before. And they're hardworking people, but they've never seen anything like it, and they've never, they've never done work like this before. It's terrible. Tell me what it's like at Ground Zero. Tell me about the workers that you saw and, and what they're doing there. Well, not only is it devastation, but it's very dangerous because every few minutes a whistle would go off and everybody would just run because you have all the buildings around it, which are in such a weakened state that people just don't know. And so they just have to take off. And then they come back and they're working under 50-story buildings that you don't know if, gonna, if they're going to fall down. So it's a terrible thing for the workers and it's a terrible thing for the world, really. How have you spoken to any of your men? Do you know how they're reacting to this? Because emotionally, this must be so incredibly difficult. Well, there are a lot of them, but they've never seen bodies like this. I mean, the bodies all over. The uh, I mean, the, the great thing is when they find somebody that's alive, like the five firemen that they just found a little while ago. So that's the great thing, and that's what they're all striving for. But uh, generally speaking, that's not what the case. That's not the case. So. They are working very, very hard, but it's it's a very depressing situation for these folks. As you walked around and as you saw the piles of rubble, there are thousands of families out there who are hoping that someone might be in a pocket somewhere, still alive, still breathing, waiting to be dug up. As you assessed that damage from your perspective, do you believe that's possible? Well, I, I would certainly not want to be the one to say it's not possible. Certainly, it's uh, it's a tough situation, but you can't give up hope because there's always hope. I mean, the five men, I'm sure their families thought that they probably were gone, and now they walk in the door. A couple of them walked away after they were dug out. So there probably are some more people in there, and therefore you can't give up hope. You've had an impact on the skyline of New York. What is it like as you see it now? It's like a whole different skyline. It's like a whole different city and world. Uh, I cannot believe the sight of Lower Manhattan without the World Trade Center, and therefore we have to rebuild, not necessarily in that form, but we have to rebuild uh, at least as good and maybe better. Just finally, can you tell me emotionally as you walked around, we have, we have heard some of the stories from the firemen. They're so exhausted uh, and, and mentally and physically. What was it like for you personally to go in and see all of what you saw? Well, it was amazing to see it. It was a very depressing scene, but I'll tell you what, you really can take heart. These firemen and policemen and the construction workers equally the courage they have is unbelievable. I mean, they're working, digging out and lifting up steel. And above them, you have 55-story buildings that are very possibly going to be pouring down on them any minute. And they're working like nothing's wrong. I mean, it's, they're amazing.